Hello, we are live. Welcome to Saturday crafting, not yet spring. That's why we're crafting on Saturday. I'm so ready for spring. Is anyone else with me? Uh, I think that's probably why this, what inspired this card today. But hello, everyone. So if you're watching the replay, you can probably skip past the hellos until you see uh, the, the large the mat is the screen. Hello from every place. Look at everybody popping in. Adia is here today. For those of you that don't know, she is my 14-year-old daughter. Hi. Hi. Who assists <laughs> with lives quite frequently. It's a very informal one today, so she is over there multitasking, doing her nails. And <laughs> oh, yes, because she's going to her friend's kink day today. So that would be great. All right. Look at everybody popping in. Hello. Hello. All right. So last minute live kind of. Uh, impromptu for me. I was crafting this week, making lots of fun stuff. I'll give you a sneak peek of those. I haven't posted them yet, but I'll show you. Um, and one of the cards uh, I made, I just love so much. And so I wanted to share that with all of you today because it's so super easy. Now, before we get started, I want to let you know, if you have been hanging out with me, you no doubt probably have this download, um, but there is a download, a link to a download, let me know where to send it, uh, in the description box of this video. And that link is going to, you'll let me know what email to send it to, and that's going to be a seven page download of 21 different designs you can use for making your cards, finishing off your backgrounds. So I have this, my most asked question is how do I finish this card or this background that I just made? So can you uh, switch cameras for me? Of course. I'm going to show you, um, if you're like me, you have a plethora of backgrounds just kind of hanging out in your stash. And oftentimes I kind of even get stumped. So I put this download together to get the creative juices flowing. Uh, you can open it up. You can flip to one particular one and try it out with your own style. And I really feel like it kind of just gets you, gets the motor running. So that download, I would be remiss if I did not share that with you. It is in the link or in the description box of this one, as well as the supplies that I'm using today. I'm also drinking my lunch right now. So. Um, let's see. I've been, what is Lisa saying? I've been reorganizing my craft room using a lot of your hints, tips. Oh, yay. Very cool. I love to hear that. I hope that's very useful. Okay. Um, Cheryl says, wonder why I can see this on my Roku TV YouTube channel, but here on YouTube on my laptop, it hasn't started yet. Hmm, I wonder that too. Maybe close your browser and start again. Maybe it's just kind of lagging. Uh, sound is good, everyone. I presume so, or else you probably would have told me already. So, uh, and I'm not as washed out with the lighting. I managed to fix that problem as well. Okay, so what are we going to be doing today? Let's jump into it. Yay, Jack in 2002, you're here. Finally joined, huh? First time. So excited. I'm so happy everybody's here. Okay, so we're going to make this card today uh, or a version of it. You know, we're going to kind of do a couple different things. So if you want to play along, you're going to need one of your backgrounds and probably one that's sort of like an ink smush or even one of your alcohol backgrounds, possibly, depending on the uh, type of products you use. It doesn't matter. But something with a background like this as opposed to like a pattern. OK, so if you're playing along, you're going to need that and you're going to need a stamp that has an open uh, kind of open pattern in your right under the keyboard is my um, the stamp stuff we're using. I forgot to put it over here. Okay. Yeah, perfect. So you're going to want something that almost looks like you should be coloring it in. That's what we're going to be using. So I'm going to use the Lovely Bunches by scrapbook.com. Um, and you can see the pattern here is sort of like that open outline. And then you'll need some glitter glue and maybe some embellishments and a sentiment of your choice. Okay. All right, so let's see. Now, this is because this isn't a formal class or anything. I am going to be probably paying attention to the chat a lot more just because, you know, craft, chat, have fun, all that. I know, I'm in the camera. And Adia is getting stuff from behind me, I suppose. Okay. <laughs> hello, hello. All right. So I don't say hello to you. Know that I see your hi, Mary. I think Patty just popped in. So hello. Um, if you have a question for me, Make sure you put it in all caps or you at least cap, uh, put in capital the word question so that we can catch it really quickly. 
Um, is the download new? It's previous. No, it's not new, Wanda. It's the previous one. I'm working on a new one um, just for more ideas because I don't think I have this design in there. So I'm getting more designs as they come and I will be making a new one. But nope, it's the old one. Okay. So, and it's the backgrounds designed. I have a stencil one too, but this one particular is the background. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do, I actually had a couple um, backgrounds laying around and I don't want the light to wash this out totally, but like really pretty, right, background. So I'm probably gonna use this one today. And you want a coordinating piece, any color you want. So I'm gonna use, in this one, I used sort of this like aqua teal color. Um, but on this one today, I'm going to see if I have something that matches any color in this background. And if not, I'm going to pull back in this one. This one actually matches a lot better. So I can kind of make those pop. And if you're curious, I'm using the Smooth uh, Roses pattern paper from scrapbook.com. Oh, this color. You better stop it. Stop me dead in my tracks. Oh, why? Could it be because my nails? <laughs> match almost perfectly. I just literally just did my nails, by the way. It's been like months since I've done my nails. You're a winner and you are out. We're going to use this background instead. Okay. So those are my two pieces that I'm going to be using. I am going to um, cut this down a little bit so that I can have it framed just like our sample card here. All right, so this is like, I'm gonna be talking a lot throughout it, but it really is like the simplest card ever. So if you have your background, if not, you could probably make your background in the next two minutes um, if you wanted to. But I'm gonna first start by cutting this down because I don't want to stamp it and then cut it down. I actually wanna cut it down first. This is an A2 size, four and a quarter by five and a half. So I'm gonna go down to, um, I kinda like the white on this side. So I'm actually, well, it's pretty even. Yeah, we're fine. I'm just going to cut off a quarter inch total. So uh, an eighth of an inch, I suppose it would be, on each side. And then the same for um, the five and a half piece. Right. So I get that. Now I know that's going to get framed. Now there's other things you can do. You can probably run this through like a rectangle stitch die and have that nice and framed. That'd be nice. Um, but I'm going to leave it just as it is. And then I'm going to pull in my... Uh, Misty. Questions. Yeah, questions. Did you ever figure out the glitter pen fall off issue? Uh, oh, man, that's a good question. I think I did. What did I figure out? Um, so she's, she or he, I can't see who asked, Wanda, um, is asking if when the glitter pen, when you, when it dries, it comes off on your fingers. And I used a fixative on it. So it was a spray fixative. And that seemed to do the trick. So it was this right here, the workable fixative that I use. Now, some people say hairspray too. So if you already have hairspray in your stash, I have some Tresemme. You probably just try that. But yes, I believe that did work. Thank you for the follow-up question. Another question by Patty. Um, I have a lot darker backgrounds made with Lindsay powders. Will that work? I think that will work beautifully. Maybe instead of stamping your image in black, you can stamp it in uh, clear and then white emboss it or white ink. So if it's really dark, the black's probably not going to show up that much. Um, if it's like anything darker than this, probably you're going to want to maybe go the opposite end. Uh, I, I like this, even though it's not like you can definitely see the pattern, right? Because it's light enough in the back. But even if it wasn't that stark, I think it's just the subtlety of it would look good. All right, Marilyn, welcome to the first live. So I am going to use, I'm going to use the same one because I actually really like this stamp set. This is, I'm working on a kind of curating um, a list of things for new stampers, uh, of th just suggestions. Of course, you know, I'm not the one to ever say buy exactly what I have, but like suggestions and having like, if I wanted to start card making, where would I begin type of thing? So I'm working on that series. Um, but I think a good floral stamp, I have a couple that I keep pulling out over and over again. Now I know when I flip this piece of card stock um, the other way, I'm gonna want it to kind of uh, just lay out this way. So what am I saying? Framing it like that, okay? So that's what I'm gonna do. 
All right, I'm going to be using some VersaFine Claire Nocturne ink today because it's very crisp. This is watercolor card stuff. I want to be able to stamp it a couple of times. That's why it's in my Misty. But you want to make sure with this ink, you are not putting your finger right in it because it takes a couple seconds to dry. Okay. Question. Yeah. Um, should we use pump or aerosol hairspray as a fixative? Does it matter? Oh, I don't think it matters. It's just the stickiness of it that keeps it from moving. So I think you're good either way. Good question. Very good question. I am like a blush pink rose kind of lady today. Like I got my sweatshirt on. No, no, no. I have my... <laughs> no, no, no. Idiot. Always keeping me humble. Okay. Did I splatter ink on this background? I splattered this particular spray. This is the Distress Spray Stain Brush Pewter. That's on that background. So yes, I did. I actually water spritzed it too. So I kind of got that water resist look and I put additional sprays on it. I have my little tool here. Let me use that. Okay. So I got one side. It's a little bit off, more off than I would want, but we're going to stick with it because I want it to be even. So I'm not going to mess with that stamp and being very careful not to put my hands in it. You can heat set this with some clear embossing powder if you like. That's not going to change the uh, design of our card. So if you prefer to do that, then by all means, do that. Oh, thank you, Gina. I love this. I just got this sweater, uh, this sweatshirt. You should see the whole thing. Actually, I'll show you in a second. It's stinking cute. I got it on sale at Halara. If any of you have ever bought clothes from there, I'm a fan. I, I have a bunch of clothes from there. Affordable and really comfortable. Um, I wanted to actually, because you know, if you've been hanging out with me any length of time, you know, I only like to promote stuff I use and like, and they're a company that I would absolutely <laughs> connect with to do like a affiliate or, you know, promotion because I love their stuff, but good quality stuff. Okay. So I have that double stamped. I'm good there. And so far so good. I mean, this is like taking your card from one level to the next um, throughout the process. Like this right here with a sentiment would be great. Like no more needed. I think it's great. You have a fun background. If you're like me, you sometimes get caught up in the, I need to do more kind of game. And sometimes you don't, but we are gonna go and make this card glittery. Cause again, this was the one that made me stare and be so excited about it. Okay. So let me clean up just a little bit here. These are the um, reusable kind of washcloths. They almost look like paper towels, but they're towels. I got them from the Dollar Tree and I've been using it like crazy. Questions? No? Um, you, what was the place for the, oh no, there's no questions. No? Uh -uh. What was the place for the sweatshirt again? Mm. Halara, H-A-L-A-R-A. -A -A. They should sponsor the video. <laughs> That'd be great. I do have a sponsor though coming up that I am so excited about. And if any of you, well, I don't really have a lot of sponsors for my videos, quite honestly. Um, but this, this company reached out to me and I, it's not even a crafting company. It's my other passion. So for me to be able to merge the two, ah, so excited. Okay. And then that's probably like super vague. Um, and I'm sorry about that, but let's just say it's in the mental health space. Okay. I'll leave it there. Okay, um, we have our, our card here ready to go. So the next thing that we're going to be doing is I'm going to actually work on the sentiment because we're not going to make it glittery till we're finished because that's the last thing you want to do on a card because then you can put it aside and not put your elbow into it. Okay? Yeah, I'm always confused as to what to put in my Misty when I'm stamping. Mm. Oh, okay. I like that. That's a good question. Let me ask answer that question while we're here. So... You have your Misty is going to have this foam pad in it. Now, this is a mouse pad for the Misty. You might not have the uh, the mouse, this attached to it. it. might just be a piece of foam like that, right? This is for when you're using clear photopolymer stamps or acrylic stamps. But when you're using a red rubber stamp, you're going to take that out and then you'll use your Misty that way because the red rubber has like this amount of thickness to it. So you wouldn't want to keep this in there. So I hope that helps. Um, great question for a new Misty user. Thank you for asking them.
Okay, Marjorie says, have you used a grip mat in your Misty? I just started using one and I no longer need tapes. Right? Yeah, I've heard about it. I haven't started yet, but I probably will very soon. Um, but yes, that's fantastic. Uh, thank you for the reminder. So we're going to work on the sentiment next. Now we know this is going to be framed on here. Oh, look how pretty that goes together already. Loving it. Now the sentiment I used, I'm not going to use the same one actually, but the sentiment I used was from this Hello Spring stamp set that just came out. This is from scrapbook.com. I, I really, really love the sentiments in it. Um, but I'm not going to reuse this one. I do want to talk about it real quick though, because the one I'm going to be using today has coordinating dies. I'm taking a shortcut. So for this sen uh, sentiment right here, what I did and what we'll do is we're going to stamp it and then heat emboss it with white embossing powder onto the coordinating color. And our coordinating color today is sort of this rosy kind of red. Then I cut it out what I call bubble cutting, which means I just cut along the shape of the sentiment. And then I put it on black cardstock and did it again. So I got this black outline. Okay, so that's how I was able to do that. But we're going to do sort of a cheating method, a shortcut, if you will, not cheating, a shortcut so that we can still get a similar shadow look. So I do need a piece. Now, you can do one of two ways. I can do this. Uh, no, I'm not going to suggest that. We're going to actually use a whole new piece of cardstock uh, for this. And, of course, we're going to just use a piece of it for the sentiment. But I don't usually pull out... Um, colored cardstock. I hardly ever use it. And this was really fun to put a sentiment on there. So I'm going to use one of my, I'm going to make a birthday card because I don't have enough. And so this might actually be good for your quinsay today. Yeah, yeah. that's floral. Um, and so I'm going to choose a happy birthday sentiment. I want something sort of elegant. I can kind of look with my acetate and say, okay, this one would look really pretty on there. But I'm going to let Adia choose. Come on over. You choose. But my hair. No one cares about your hair. And they're not going to see you. <laughs> okay. Do you want this happy birthday here? And now think of, you have to think of it like this. It's going to have actually come with a little bit of shadow and look. So it'll be white on blush. And it'll have a black background. So that one is pretty. That one. That's really pretty. And those are like the two elegant ones. Let's eat cake. Oh, no. I'm sorry. <laughs> Uh, I like, I like, I like this one. This one? Yeah. Okay. So I'll we'll do, do it pretty. Very good. We'll do that one. Oh, the boys are home. There's okay, probably, get, this, is a, this is live, so they're, we'll probably get interrupted. I think they're bringing home tacos. You be. Okay. Um, yeah. So let me live in life with Patty Ann says, I don't have a lot of sentiment shadow dyes, so I often bubble cut around the sentiment. Yeah. Same. I do too. I, I love that look. I think it's just really, really good. Um, it gives you, it just had so much more interest in my opinion than just like a straight rectangle cut. Um, but both are fine. Okay. So I'm going to do, we're going to be doing some heat embossing here. I'm going to pull out my, and you know what? I'm not going to waste time because we're, I always like to do this. This is a tip for you. Uh, as you're crafting, you might as well pull out a couple other sentiments and heat emboss those as well and just keep them for your stash instead of always, you know, one at a time. So I know I'm going to be bubble cutting, so I don't need, I need a little bit of space around, but I don't need too much. And what other one can I use? Let me do a plain happy birthday. This way I can kind of finish off quite a few happy birthday cards with these. There's a lot of sentiments in this one. I say if you're new to card making, this is a staple sentiment set because for birthdays, there's just so many um, different ways they say it in here. And let's do cheers. So that's another tip. All right. So I'm going to be doing some white embossing on. I picked a dark enough cardstock to make that stand out. So that's good. Before I get started, if you hadn't seen my most recent video that I just put out, I got this new little, it's like a makeup powder tin. It's not tin, but it's wood. And it's just so fun. And I use it for my embossing anti-static powder tool. And you want to use this so that, I, can you tell them that we're live? Yeah. Come on, boy. So you want to use, make sure you put your anti-static powder on there so that your embossing powder doesn't kind of get everywhere. Okay. 
So I'm going to do that first. That's prepping the surface. What's bubble cut, Marsha? Okay, bubble cut is, it's just a silly little name I named, um, cutting my sentiments around their lettering. So it kind of, the bubble, I don't know, remember when we were kids, we used to like draw bubble letters. That's where it kind of got in my head. But it's just cutting around the shapes of your actual sentiment. And instead of just doing like a straight square or rectangle. What is the purpose of embossing? So heat embossing is um, gonna give an extra layer of interest to whatever you're doing. So heat embossing is gonna let it bubble up almost, gives you like a hard plasticky kind of look when it's melted. And it's just for effect. It doesn't, the only thing it does prevent is ink smearing. That, that it does. But um, if you just, if I just stamp these in white ink, then I'd have to let it dry or maybe the white ink isn't crisp enough. So it does, in this case, provide a very crisp white uh, kind of finish for us. Now, I like to stamp twice my embossing ink. This is sticky ink from Distress. You can get them in lots of brands. But I'm going to stamp and then I'm actually going to do this twice because I like to get a good stamped impression. Danielle. The powder doesn't make the ink any less effective. Not at all. It does not at all. Great question. In fact, we're going to go back and wipe up that sheet this um, so we get all that excess powder off. Okay. So I'm going to, for some reason, I don't, I'm not a huge fan of the Distress Embossing Ink. Not because the ink isn't good. It is. The ink is good. But it actually sits kind of even almost with your lid. I don't know. It doesn't, it doesn't stand out enough. <laughs> in my opinion, but it works. These are really great questions everyone's asking. Okay, let's see. Yes, thank you, Roberta, for helping to answer my question or that question. Okay, so then uh, at this time, you probably wanna be heating up your heat tool. So I'll start doing that and I'm gonna be pulling out my white embossing powder. The cheers on that one did not get very good impression, but that's all right. We'll just keep it moving. All right, so you might be able to hear me, you might not, but I'm going to just pour my white embossing over it. And because I prepped my surface, I'm going to not get a lot of that extra sprinkles of powder everywhere. I bought a couple bottles of
Okay, we're back. Can someone tell me if you hear me? Um, let me know if you hear me. We're trying to set back up. We actually lost power. Uh, hang on. We lost power completely. Uh, so we had to reset a fuse. Adia, can you look for comments to make sure they can yep, hear us? Yeah, they can hear us. Okay, cool. Give me a sec. We're going to set back up. Okay, you do your magic there. Okay. Okay, so we're sorry about that. We lost, like, totally lost power. It's, so it's interesting because during classes, I always give that caveat. If we lose power, <laughs> oh, it's good to know the live keeps running. Um, so, yeah. All right. So we're, we're back. Let me just fix a couple things here. And I'm going to attempt to do this again. I need to warm up my heat thingy. Yes. All right. I was faster than I thought it was going to be. see me use this a lot. I like to use this on top of my cutting surface because this will warp if it gets too hot. So I'm just going to heat set this. Question. Yep, let me just heat this and then I'll answer that question. I don't see it. Hey, 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 I don't see anything, honey. Here we go. You got to do that on another, um, another screen. If you open up Amazon and go to my orders and type in search orders bamboo, you'll get that exact one that I bought. Exact what? But don't link it yet. Exact what? Oh, I'm sorry. Um, she was asking, Carla was asking about the anti-static powder thingy. I don't know that it went, her question's gone now. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's take a pause for a sec as I kind of get myself situated here. Can yeah. you um, bring down the questions so I can see them a little bit better. All right, stop. All right, I can't find anything like that. Where do you get it and how does it come? Do I have to get something to put it in like a sock? Oh, okay. You're asking the original one. So if you go onto any crafting website and type in anti-static powder bag or powder bag, um, you're likely going to get it and it will all come together. There are certain companies that have it where you put it together uh, if it's a brush, but yeah, you can get that just on its own. And actually, let me show you. It'll look just like this. So just like a little bag. I have this one with a paper or a binder clip. All right. You can go back down to all the new comments, please. Okay. Sure. All right. I see a question that says fussy cut with a question mark, but I don't know what that means. All right, so here we have our uh, cutting, our pieces cut out. So Adia chose hers. Let me grab my scissors. And so that I don't spill everything, I'm going to put away my embossing powder. Okay, I'm going to put my scissors. Oh, I, yeah, I was telling you, I like to heat on top of this silicone thing. It's really thick. It's just from the kitchen um, area of a store and that helps keep this from getting hot and warping. So you're going to see what bubble cutting is here in action. I'm going to cut away the other pieces. I want to leave enough space for me to be able to cut around my uh, sentiment here. Okay. Question. Go ahead. Um, it said, what did you buy two bottles of? Oh, yeah, <laughs> that's right. Exactly when I got cut off. Um, I bought two or three bottles of the super fine white embossing powder from Ranger and I used them in that container. So I know I've gotten asked, is that one big box bottle of embossing powder in there? No, it's not. Um, I just bought a few and put them in. So, yeah. Oh, what am I doing? I don't need to fussy cut this. This was the whole point. <laughs> was the whole point of me using my dies. I'm all discombobulated, folks. Um... Okay, this actually comes with sentiments. 
uh, that we can actually use to die cut our stuff. So I think it's probably too late for me now. I already started cutting it, but let's see. Let's see yeah. We're going to try because we're not going to be wasteful. I'm going to give it go. Oh, what did she say? Did you not say fussy cut? I think that's... N. Oh, funny cut. No, no, no. Fussy. C-U-N-T. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, my. Okay. All right. I didn't even catch that, so. All right, I'm going to use my die here. Now, if you're doing this, um, like I started out, you want to make sure that you leave enough space if you're going to be using coordinating dies. But like I said, we're kind of doing a shortcut today because I have them and I want to use them. I don't have a lot of coordinating dies for stuff, but for sentiments, I think I'm going to be uh, using them a lot, so they're helpful. I'm going to just use my little mini die cutting machine. Don't you be sorry. No big deal. Question, what black embossing powder do you recommend? I have a Butterfingers moment and dumped my whole bottle from 20 years ago on my carpet. Yikes. Um, I don't have a black embossing powder. Anybody in the chat want to help? I don't use really black. I have a black sparkly one, but it's not plain black. Okay. Um, it, did anyone else lose sound? Can you guys hear okay? Just so that we know. Uh, and let me see what else. Same goes, ask a question. Monique said, I lost the sound, now the screen. Oh, I wonder if she's watching the old. Type, tell Monique to, if she just logged in to fast forward a little bit if she can, because she might have lost it when we got kicked out. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, that worked. Yeah, perfect. Okay, so there's our sentiment. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to run this through again but with black cardstock because I'm going to do sort of a shadow. Now it won't outline the entire thing like my other example did, but it will definitely uh, do what we need it to. Well, that's the hope anyway, right? I can hear and see. Thanks, Gina. Okay. Run this through and it's the same exact die. So we are going to be good when we lay it right behind. It'll line up. Also, Maria, a video came along with your card. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's right. You want to know how I made this or how my mom made this? Okay, so let's start bringing in our parts and pieces here for the card, right? And I know, like I said, like we've been on already for a half hour. This card would take no more than 10 minutes if I wasn't here gabbing and losing power. Um, okay, someone's helping me answer questions. Very good. So here's what we have loosely what we're working with. So there's our outline um, sentiment. And then we have this as the top. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to offset it a little bit to get a little bit of that shadow on. So it's very similar to what I did uh, manually, right? So manually, I was able to do it all the way around. But this one, since we can't do it all the way around because it's the same size, we're just going to offset it. Okay. So it just adds a little extra something, a little another way to use your stuff. Hey, thank you so much. The card friend's pretty. Okay, very cool. There was a, it, I thought I saw someone ask a question about stencil in class. If you can come back and ask that again. Teresa, yes, all embossing powders use heat as far as I know. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're going to start assembly. So very simple. You can use a uh, tape roller. You can use uh, liquid adhesive. I'm going to use my um, glue gun. This is the glue press and I'm starting to notice, I think I'm, it's still working excellently, but I think I'm getting low er on glue. It's probably going to be time for a reset and a, minute, a few, a little bit, a few cards. <laughs> and I'm going to eyeball this because we do have it as a mat behind it. If you want to save some of that cardstock behind, by all means, you can do some die cutting in the center of it. I probably could have done my sentiment in the center because I was die cutting, not fussy cutting. All right, so we have that down. And now I'm actually going to pop up my sentiment because I just got some new foam tape and I'm excited about it. So I'm going to use that. I got the new 3M, 3 millimeter foam tape from scrapbook.com. And so it's really thick and it's fun and I'm going to use it. 
Okay, question. Yeah. What is a glue press? What is a glue press? Glue press is, um, this is a glue tool that sits in its little holster here. And the squeeze right here is a lot less on your hands than if you're squeezing a full bottle, depending on the bottle. It's a very fine tip right here. And it just makes it easy for you to apply your glue. It's kind of the newest tool on the market. Uh, but in true me fashion, I found an alternative to do that. If you don't want to spend the $35, but you're looking for something similar. Um, I uh, tried out these syringes. You can check that on the video, but I tried out these syringes because the uh, application of the glue comes out just as easy and you don't have to press anything. So there's that option as well. But yeah, I, I'm loving the glue press. You can just sit it in its holster and there's a silicone piece down there that keeps it from clogging. So it works great. It's, a, it's really well designed. Any other questions? Um, yeah, the one who has the stencil. Yes. She said... Okay. I took your stencil class. What are two basic products to use with stencils? Can I watch the replay from the original email link? Yes, you can. The replay is still the same. You can watch that uh, at your leisure whenever you like. And basic supplies for stenciling. Stencil, ink, if you're going to be doing inking with it. Or uh, paste, if you're going to be doing paste. And then um, something, a tool to apply it. Those are basically the major major players in stenciling. Oh, and cardstock, of course. <laughs> you gotta put the stencil down on something. Um, what brands of glue do you use? I use um, Barely Art Glue, and I use uh, Artiste Glue from scrapbook.com. So these are, I use three. three. So liquid glue is Barely Art, the Artiste, and then also this came with glue from Nuvo, so I'm using that right now, but when that empties, I'm going to fill it with one of these. Okay, any problems with half bottle of the glue? I'm not there yet, Wanda, I don't think. Okay, I'm oh, sorry, go ahead. I think um, it's still probably more, it's either more than half full, or it's still working. I'll take a look at it in a second. Go ahead, Adia. Another question, um, do you need to use a different type of paper other than cardstock when using a lot of water? Yes, you want to use watercolor cardstock. Um, regular cardstock is not going to hold up for very long. So that's why with these uh, fun inked backgrounds I have here, they're actually watercolor. Mm -hmm. And then um, oh, we are getting so many good questions. I know. Um, did you answer the, would you link the, the question, the syringe versus glue press? Yeah, uh, I can. Yep. After class, I will. Yep. And also you can check it out in action on the video. Um, I believe it's, oh boy, a hacks video that I listed. Um, yes. <laughs> Just yes. I'll put it in there. I put the Google Press link in the chat. Okay. Too. I think scrapbook.com might be sold out right now, but they are. yeah, you can get notified if you're adamant about buying it from them. Okay. So there we go. We have that. Now I'm actually going to finish this and put it onto my card base. Um, and then I'm going to finish, finish. And that's going to be with all of the sentiments. So what do you think? Do you think this card is good enough for Maria? Yes, I think she's going to love it. Those are her favorite colors. Hopefully it dries by, oh yeah, it'll be dry by five. Because we're going to do some. These are her favorite colors? Uh-huh. Oh, nice. Is there a difference between regular watercolor paper in a pad versus watercolor cardstock? Um, not that I know of. I just, I think that might be just the way we're using the terms. But if it says watercolor paper... It's watercolor cardstock. I, mean, I don't even know why they call it paper. Uh, it seemed cardstock, but then again, I'm using the term cardstock as if it's like thicker paper. So I just confuse things more, I'm sure. <laughs> just if it says watercolor, you should be good. Or even mixed media works pretty well. I ruined my nails, mother. Mm -hmm. I ruined them. My care factor is low right now. Wow. <laughs> For your ruined nails. Well, KCD is really good. Is it good? It's the best I've ever had. Oh, my. Wow. I didn't get a case of the quesadilla. You did not. Okay. Um, All right. Here we go. Adia's eating her quesadilla. Um, sentiment looks good with the black background. Oh, thanks. Yeah. I chose black because uh, the we inked this in black, the stamp set. So I thought that was a good coordination with it. So now we are going to uh, pretty this up. Okay. 
Now, I did the original card in a couple ways. I used diamond embellishments, which I have linked in the description. They're actually for nail art, but they're flat on one side, which makes them perfect for card making. And they're super cheap. So um, I put that in the description. But then we're also going to use some silver glitter glue. So whatever brand you have is fine. I'm using the pops of color, and I'm going to pull out my uh, embellishments here. If you're new to my embellishment storage, um, this is from Amazon. It's five drawers. It's linked. You can click on it to look at it up close because it's hard to see it. This is just one of the drawers. I keep my embellishments in there. So I'm going to actually put down... I'm going to put my, it doesn't matter. You can do your uh, diamonds or your embellishment or your pops of color. But I'm going to do the embellishments first. And I'm going to choose out, I'm going to try to find big, but you can do different sizes. That's what I love about these particular, um, the set I got for the diamonds is they're in different sizes, which always, in my opinion, when you're buying embellishments, even sequins, Alternate sizes helps with the layout and the design. <laughs> Jan. Jan loves the interaction between us, too. Adia? I put it on the screen. Oh, did you? <laughs> okay. So to apply my embellishments, I'm just going to put them in the center of the flowers. So I'm going to add my glue first. And then I'll go back and add my embellishments. So my big diamond is going to go in the middle of my big flower. And then my medium diamond is going to go in my medium flower. Okay. And then I don't, I'm not going to add the other two because they're too cut off right now. Um, I had the stamp a little bit more inward on the other card. So we're good there. Let me just funnel these back in to their home. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, question, what is the pen for the embellishments? This pen is a, um, it's actually used for nail art. Uh, craft companies sell it too. I don't know how much they sell it for, but I got mine from Amazon. It's very inexpensive, and it comes with a couple different tips. It's wax, so it sticks to things. It helps pick up things. So, I just picked up a release paper from the glue. And it just helps you place it rather than using your fingers. Maybe you got long nails and that's hard to do. Me, me. Like Adia. That's right. <laughs> Sharice. 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 I filtered. Okay. If I'm being honest, I filtered. All right. Here we go. Um, what you're going to do next is you're going to outline anything that has lines. Let's look at our example. So you can see I took the glitter glue and I just outlined all this stuff. Okay. And that's basically it. So if Avia can handle questions as I uh, color with my glitter glue. Just tell me the name. Uh, pops of color. Is that what you mean? Mm -hmm. Oh, it's the silver pops of color, but it's in the description. Okay. Yeah. They can grab I, I added that one. I think the only thing I didn't add, I didn't add the embellishment pen. But I did add the storage. I knew stuff I knew I would show in the video. I added it. Good to know. Yeah. And you just want to draw with your uh, glitter glue. You don't want to stay in one spot too long or else you're going to get globs. And that's not what we're going for. It doesn't have to be perfect. You are literally just adding uh, an accent to your card, right? It's not perfection here. But it really, when it's all said and done, you'll, well, you'll see it. You already saw the example. It really adds so much to it. So what are people doing this weekend? We have a basketball game at 5. Adi has got her birthday party she's going to. It's a quince, not a birthday party. Sorry. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. My dad. <laughs> I'm just, oh, I am super quiet. Okay, Gina. Uh, is the Excel spreadsheet under the tips and tricks video or was it in an email? Uh, Excel spreadsheet, well, it's kind of was in both, but if you go into the tips and tricks thing right now and you uh, add your email again, don't worry, you won't be added to my email list twice. It, it knows that you're already in there, but it will send you the hacks, tips and tricks Excel immediately. So that'll probably be super fast for you if you want to do that. Um, I 
it, I've sent it through email, I think, a long time ago. But it's been a while since I did that. Also, if you're not getting emails from me and you're on my email subscription list, please go check your spam. I'm going to guarantee I've been hanging out there waiting for you to click on me. <laughs> Just lost in your spam or junk folder. I had one person tell me that. She's like, oh, my gosh, every email you've sent me is in that folder. Okay. But I think once you click on it and open it, your computer tells you, like, you know, that you want me in your inbox. Or you could set it that way, I think, too. All right. What else? Anything? Nope. People are just complimenting you, and I'm trying to get this ugly thing off my nails. What happened to your nails? I tried to do a sponge ombre technique, and I ended up just putting a bunch of gel all over my fingers. Oh, no. Because you didn't have the tape to cover your nails? Yeah. Oh, my. And also, it looks... Sensor, sensor. It looks terrible. Yeah. You Did you just say sensor? Yeah. Yeah, please sensor. Okay. Here we go. That is probably going to do it for this card, but I'm going to try to just fold this down a little bit more. Okay, there we go. All right, and that is our finished card. Okay, so minus the hiccup and all the jabbering. Fast card, right? Like, this is super simple. You do a stamp, a sentiment, and then you add some embellishments. So I really wanted to show that for you all because that was so, uh, so simple. OFC means, of course, in case anyone's... Oh. Not 14 years old. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Can you put my camera on, please? No. Okay, here I am. Um, uh, let me show you my sweatshirt. It's kind of it's kind of a half sweatshirt, but like it's got this thing here and it's kind of ruffles here. And look at the cute ruffle sleeves. That's my sweatshirt. I wanted to show you. I was very excited about it. And this is my favorite color. I see that I gravitate towards this color in clothes even so okay let me just drink my shake and see what's coming up here thank you this card was fun what did she say what did suzanne say oh she said your name is beautiful and i love, I your, love voice. your voice oh that's a compliment uh, she does not sick. like her voice that's because i'm sick but you so Oh, people are texting the GC. Mm. Okay. So let's see. Let me talk since if you're still hanging out with me, thank you for being here. Card's done. Um, I'm here to answer questions about anything if you have questions. But I do want to um, just kind of share a couple things that I've released on my YouTube channel recently. Uh, recently, I just posted a video about some alternative some more alternative craft supplies. I've been doing a lot of those videos lately because every time I post one, the comment section is flooded with ideas. And so you are all basically keeping my YouTube channel afloat. <laughs> so thank you for that. Uh, but always check out the comment section of those videos because so many good ideas. Obviously I can't get to all of them. Um, if you by any chance are shopping this weekend, well, let me back up. So scrapbook.com is having scrapbook uh, SBC Fest next, nope, not next week, March 8th and 9th. And it's like a free two-day event where tons of different creators come on and I think it's through YouTube and make a bunch of stuff. And it's super fun. And if you want to follow along with them and want to use their supplies, um, you can check out and you'll have plenty of time to get them in, in by then. But you can check out what each creators. I'm not part of SBC Fest this time, uh, but I'll be crafting along. Um, super fun. If you are shopping, though, this weekend with um, scrapbook.com, there are, I think there's a few different coupons. They have a great sale going on. I was all in the email. So if you got this, if you're here through email, you've already got that. Um, can you link on scrapbook.com, link the, if you click on the website and you click on SBC Fest, um, yep. Right in the center there that, yeah, right there. And you link that link, um, that they can actually get more information on SBC Fest from there. It's totally free. Uh, they, I think they replay all the stuff afterward too on their YouTube channel. So if you can't make it throughout the weekend, that's fine, but 
it's it's fun. It's really fun. It's live, I believe. So yeah, it's live. So you can kind of chat along too. Yay! Thanks, Achoo. Peggy. Um, let's see. Barbara says I'm having lots of trouble with embossing. A video with hints tricks would be much appreciated. Okay, you got it. I will work on that. Um, let's see. Question: I have so many embossing folder backgrounds. Have you done a video, or will you do one? <laughs> Who said that? Do was that Jan? That said, the comments just went up. I can't see it. Go scroll down a little bit. I can't. There's nothing there. No. Up. Oh, right. okay. Right. Stop. Stop. Jan. <laughs> Jan, I just did an embossing folder class. That's why I'm laughing. Um, yes, I I will bring a lot of those into a, a YouTube video. I don't know when, but um, that's hilarious. I thought you would have seen that. Yes, I love my embossing folders. We had a great class and uh, got to think outside the box with them. I haven't used embossing folders in a decade, so it was super fun. Okay, Marcia says, I'm having such a hard time. I'm a new card maker and just went insane buying so much stuff. Oh, I know. I'm totally overwhelmed. I know. I know. That's kind of why I want to do that series of like, hey, welcome to card making. Let's all take a deep breath <laughs> because I did not have YouTube really prominently when I started. So I was not overwhelmed I or inundated. Um, where to start? I would start with stamping probably, just doing some stamping, some coloring. And then also evening out your time from watching people and making. Because I find that sometimes we can spend a lot of our time just watching people and not actually getting in there and being creative on our own. So I would say make sure you're balancing that a little bit if you can, because you you really want the creative time so that you can use the stuff you have. So that's sort of what one piece of advice I can give. Okay, I know I missed some. There's been a couple of things people have been popping link in. Link to the embossing class. Do you know where that is? Oh no, there's no link to the embossing class because it's past. So I didn't I did not create a um I will. I'll create a replay link and we'll send that out. Uh, can you make a note of that for me, love? Yeah. Right on that tablet right in front of you. Mm -hmm. Sorry, my eye itches. Um, we'll, yeah, I'll do that. I'll send that out. And if you're on my email list, make sure you are because that's where it'll go. I'll also post on YouTube. But, you know, you can't with YouTube and Facebook. I hit, I hit all the places. I send out all the stuff. But I don't know who's seeing what with algorithms. So email is the best place. Can you um, write it down? Yeah. Yeah, I'm trying to find it. Pen's bottom drawer. I'm trying to. Yeah. Got it. Thanks. Okay. If you missed the embossing folder class, would it be previous email? Oh, okay. No. I just answered that. Obviously, it won't be live stream, but I wondered if we can get a link to the replay. Yes. Good advice, Mary. Uh, thanks, Arlie. Yeah, that's kind of something I need to tell myself, too. I need to get into the craft room and actually have fun with it. You're welcome, Marsha. Yeah, I started with a friend, so I just too overwhelmed. Just play. Yeah, just play. That's great advice. Just get in there and play. Have fun. Relax. It's not, it's just paper. It's just for fun. And really, the whole point to me about that time in the craft space is like therapy, just like relaxing and being present. Um, that's what I get from it. Yeah. Okay, question Do you think a stamp and pierce mat is necessary to get a good image? with acrylic stamps. Um, so Gloria, are you asking if you're using an acrylic block? Um, if you're using an acrylic block with your uh, acrylic stamps, um, acrylics are fussy. <laughs> so I would say the best combo I found is you don't need a pierce mat that you pay for necessarily. You can use a silicone mat, something that has a little bit of give to it. Um, a smooth surface of a silicone mat would help. But with acrylics, you want good ink um, with those. If you're using cheap ink and acrylic stamps, it's not good. You're not going to get a good impression. So with acrylics, my best recommendation for the best possible image is a stamping platform and pigment inks. I find those work the best with acrylics um, because they photopolymer inks or excuse me, photopolymer stamps are a lot more reliable with their image because it's firmer um, plastic, I guess. It's more form of plastic. I hope that makes sense, um, but that's a great question. And yeah, you want a little bit of something underneath. 
All right, let's see. Recommend watching the video, get your supplies together, and then follow the video again. Crafting is you. You need to stop and then go. I like that. That's really good. I I actually am sort of team copy when you get started. Like I am a total fan of copying something from start to finish if you're brand new and you're really unsure about how to go about the process. Because when you're when you're using somebody's design, like say you later came back and you made this exact card. You're learning along the way and you're also kind of not worried so much about what you're making that you kind of free up some creative juices. You're like, oh, well, let me add this here or that there. Maybe just don't next time challenge yourself a little bit. Like, hey, I'm going to use this as inspiration, right? But um, I copied from start to finish for like a year when I first started because it was I wasn't feeling very confident. And then I built my confidence over it. Okay, um, let's see. So no pressure. Hi from the UK, and I just missed the live. <laughs> well, it's going to be on replay, Stacy. So you are just fine. Uh, Mary, Marsha says, "What do you do with your finished cards?" Well, I package them up sometimes and give them away as gifts. I send them out. Um, there's a stack there for the kids to use for any of their purposes, um, and I donate them as well. I have a video on my channel. Uh, if you type in the search on my channel, where to donate cards or donate cards, I have a information about where you can do Operation Gratitude. You can send your stuff to, and they send them to the troops. So that's another way, too, if you want to use them up. You are all most welcome. Yay. Very cool. Okay. So um, I'm not, I just won't, I won't sit here and just stare at you. <laughs> just to, in case we all have things to go do um, on this wonderful Saturday. Um, but if there's no more questions, uh, I hope this was helpful. I hope you had fun. I sure did. Um, thank you for adding that about the cards for club for clubs. That's great. Yes, do not. I sent a whole bunch to Operation Gratitude recently, so that was awesome. The crafter math is real on my table here. I have to clean up. And I'm going to go take a break before we have a basketball game. So this was absolutely lovely. Thank you so much. Sorry about the glitch. I'm glad you were all still there when we came back in. <laughs> so that was really good. Um, now we know what happens when you lose power. So thanks, Barbara. I, I will hope everyone has a wonderful weekend. And we will see you next time. Abe, you want to say bye? Bye, guys. Bye. We'll see you in the next one.